Good evening, everybody. My name is Cameron, and as I'm sure you've probably heard right now, the world is in a little bit of a tizzy. Without going too deep into literally everything, it seems that there are some people that are just not feeling so hot in the world right now. Russia's doing their thing, one of their things, and going after property, areas, specifically Ukraine. And that was something that I kind of like became aware of later, kind of late in the game and watching stuff on the news and whatnot, kind of, you know, portraying the the kind of scary stuff that's going on over there. I don't know too much of the details, to be perfectly honest, but I have heard basically everywhere from bad things happening, which is a very nondescript way of describing it, to things like, you know, the idea that, you know, you hear big sounds outside and you don't know whether or not those sounds are safe or not. And that's just kind of like, I don't know. It's got me feeling some type of way. It's got me feeling kind of worried, definitely anxious. I mean, it's not happening over here, but you know, I hear a car muffler outside and I'm like, that's fine. That's nothing to be worried about. But there's some folks in the world that just aren't feeling that way right now. And it's actually kind of pretty disappointing. But and there's not much I can do for that type of stuff. Much love to the world out there. This is a hug. This is I love you and ASL. My fiance and I have been learning a little bit of sign language here and there. But so I wanted to dedicate, I wanted to do like a dedication type thing. Because I feel like there's not much power a, a cocktail or a small streamer can do. But I wanted to, at least in my own way, show support for the world right now. Of the people in Ukraine who are going through some really tough times right now. Not just Ukraine too, like all the different areas around. Um, so I was doing a little bit, little bit of backstory. I was doing a little bit of scrolling through my news feed as one does in these times. Trying to ignore all the bad things happening in the world. But attempting to at least keep yourself aware. Hello, Lorla. Hello. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. I like the fact that, ooh, I like, your name is yellow. And it pairs with my blue quite well in support of Ukraine. You know, I just knew, I found out today, I'm not super aware of the world around me. And one of the things that I learned was that the Ukrainian flag is blue on top and yellow on the bottom. So I wore my, I wore my most Ukrainian outfit, which is blue, and I have yellow objects. So that's my, that's the closest thing I can do. I also have a box. I found one of our board game boxes is like yellow on top and blue on the bottom. But if you kind of like, Turn that around. It's a really fun game too. You kind of turn that around and you kind of got the, it's a different type of blue, but it's a beautiful blue and a blue, beautiful yellow. But in any case, so a little bit of backstory, scrolling through my news feed as one does, and I managed to find a cocktail related new, uh, news article that came up that was also somehow interlaced with everything else going on in the world right now. And apparently there's, a, I have my notes here to make sure that I don't forget what was going on. But there is, there's a restaurant out there in Seattle, Washington called Tutabella. And they kind of came up in the news recently for deciding to do, to, deciding to show support for, uh, I think it was either one of their workers or a couple of their workers, the res restaurant workers who are making the food in the back, who has, you know, family going through the tough times in Ukraine right now. And so the CEO of the restaurant chain, I don't know if the chain or a particular location called Tutabella decided, well, this is what we're going to do. We are going to just kind of clear out our shelves of, of, I don't know if it was just Russian ingredients or specifically cocktail ingredients, but they decided to wipe those off the shelves and create this cocktail that they would sell at all of their locations and all the proceeds from this particular cocktail would go straight to the, um, straight to the support of the, the folks in Ukraine. I believe um, the organization that they are donating to, towards is a, is a, um, is an organization called Razum, R-A-Z-O-M, for Ukraine, and it's to provide, you know, general support for the country as well as relief for people who are going through tough times right now. I've got some, I've got some exclamation point links around here in the Twitch chat. If you're watching for the YouTube video, it's down in the description. I tried to make the the links out there so that everybody could get a hold of this stuff. Uh, but this is a direct link to be able to donate to Ukraine, the Razum for Ukraine directly. And there's also, I also found too, a completely separate article that showed up in my newsfeed about itch.io, which is I believe, I don't exactly know what itch.io is. I think you can buy games and whatnot on there. It's having this huge bundle for Ukraine, kind of like a humble bundle type thing where you can pay as little as $10 and you can get 991, about a thousand different items. And those items include, I think, books, games direct download games other forms of media and i have i have uh, i have links check check them down I, I, it feels so weird saying check down in the description below because on the live feed there is no live description below but there is chat but on the youtube video there is 
click them. Go, go, click, click those links. Don't click my own. Honestly, they deserve much more support than that. But so, but so, the CEO decided to be like, oh, we don't need those Russian vodka bottles on our shelves and whatnot. We're gonna replace them with like, po like uh, uh, bottles from countries like Poland, who's right next to Ukraine, as I learned. Not very good with geography, am I? I had to check that. Um, and create their own cocktail that all proceeds would go to support Ukraine. That particular cocktail is named after the Ukrainian word for victory, and I believe that's pronounced peromoya, which is spelled P-E-R-M-O-H-A. And I wanted to just kind of like take a moment to make that cocktail on stream. I haven't really seen it anywhere. I guess it's kind of new. So I want to bring more awareness to it because I think at the very least, like, there's not so much that I can do personally about it, at the, but at the very least, I know I can do a couple of things. I can say, go get them, provide positive mental attitude. I know that I can share and make the world aware of how they can help out in their own way. And I know that I can, you know, uh, just like, just like uh, Tutabella Bella is doing, take the symbolic approach of be like, hey, we're going to do this thing. And it's specifically for the people who need the support right now. And so, with that said, I want to kick things off, finally, and showcase everyone how to make the Peramoya, Ukrainian word for victory. I hope everyone becomes okay eventually. Seriously. I would, honestly, I can't, I can't even imagine. To, to think that the world is in a place right now where, like, you got a pandemic going on, you basically got war going on, or it's something about there's a forest fire or something somewhere in the world that's heading towards a nuclear power plant. And to be perfectly honest, I think that's the last thing we need. So one of the ways that we can kind of keep our head, keep our, keep our head straight, keep our spirits up, spirits up, pun intended, is to make a little cocktail in, in, uh, in recognition and in contribution. So today's cocktail is the Petter Moya, and we're gonna start things off with making that recipe. Straight from, straight from I found, uh, the one article that I found actually lists out the recipe on it. Um, I found the Instagram posts from like the restaurant and whatnot and I think unless I could actually get a hold of the menu myself I looked on their website. I couldn't find the recipe on there But I found one article that reports this recipe and I don't have all the ingredients So forgive me. I'm gonna do the best that I can It's very nice and it's easy to feel helpless Especially when Russian credit cards and PayPal getting locked makes it kind of hard to financially help folks in Ukraine, too Yeah, I think um, the link that the link that I've got has like it's like you know we're living in a world of like technology now so they've got like cryptocurrency links down there so you can donate in like your bitcoin or your ethereum or it could be any cryptocurrency of your choice i suppose i haven't tried to donate any of my dogecoin i don't think i actually have a wallet for that stuff so i wouldn't be able to do so anyway um but yeah actually i don't need i don't need the shaker just yet instead what we're gonna do is i'm gonna build it in this pint glass shake it with this pint glass and then put it into another glass which is something that I, I don't think i've actually ever done on camera before but you can totally shake you can totally shake a drink with a little pint glass that you got laying around it fits fits right in it'll work just fine and so long as you're careful then it'll work just fine it's, a, it's actually pretty cool I, I don't remember where i learned that specifically but i think this particular recipe called for add ingredients to pint glass then shake pint glass so on and so forth the first thing, the first ingredient that's specified for Tutabella's Peramoya cocktail is to use a Polish brand vodka called Chopin, Chopin, C-H-O-P-I-N. I don't have that particular brand around me. However, I did a little bit of searching to find what kind of vodka it is, if I could do anything like that. And as it turns out, I found at least one option that suggests that Chopin does have a potato vodka, and I, I have a potato vodka as well. Um, to keep things in support of, I guess, I guess, I guess I'll put it this way. If I were in the same situation, I feel like I would do my best to try to help out the people around me, help out my local area and do what I can to try to, try to bring everybody's spirits up. So, I guess the analog to that, I'm not in Seattle, Washington, where the cocktail was made. I'm not in Ukraine, where everything's happening. But, uh, you know, this is from one of my hometowns, uh, Flemington, New Jersey, was really close to where I grew up. And so, keep things local. And that's gonna be a continuing theme, because as it turns out, there's a couple of ingredients that I just do not have access to. But, keep things local. We got a potato vodka here. It's lovely. I've, I've raved about this one before. I very much enjoy it. Oh, but before I add vodka, I need to add ice. I need to add ice, ice to the pint glass. Duh. Gotta keep things cool. Gotta keep things awesome. I have a couple of, I have a couple of small, small things here. I'm just gonna fill up as much as I can with this, uh, with the remaining tiny cubes that I've got left. Try to keep this glass nice and cool. I have a couple of Disney ice cubes as well. There's half of Mickey's pants. Uh, we've got a very thin Mickey face, Donald Duck's hat, and uh, that's it. There's nothing else in there. I think that's that's more or less. I think that's plenty of ice for uh, for the shaking purposes. 
So the very first thing that we're gonna need is one ounce or about 30 milliliters of uh, potato vodka or whatever vodka you have. I guess it's any any Polish brand that you've got laying around or something local to keep it keep it for uh, keep it with the analog. So we'll add one ounce to our cocktail shaker. Uno ounce, uno ounce, please. And I like that. I like that indeed. I also have another ingredient here that I'm changing up a little bit to keep things local. The original recipe calls for a bitter herbal liqueur called Amaro Montenegro, which is an Italian liqueur, which is, which is, it's a, um, it's, it's an Amaro spirit, which means it's basically bitter, but it's bitter and it's herbal and it's got a couple of other like earthy components to it. Uh, I wasn't able to find that in my liquor store. Pennsylvania is very difficult with their whole weird logistics system of alcohol imports and creation and distilling and blah, whatever. So I have another local brand that I went to the, st I went to the store yesterday and I was like, I'm looking for Amaro Montenegro. And they're like, well, we only have one Amaro and it's this guy. And it's apparently locally uh, made in Philadelphia. Handcrafted, they say. Proprietary blend of botanicals. And it's called Vigo. Vigo Amaro by a company called... Vigo Amaro Liqueur, PhiladelphiaDistilling.com. Okay, all right, Philadelphia Distilling, crafted and bottled by Pennsylvania, USA. All right, and there's a whole story on the back of this one, and I, I kind of like reading about new spirits, so I'm gonna go with it. It's apparently, oh, it's attempting to uh, kind of pay homage to the Italian uh, Amaro culture, so uh, I'll let the story speak for itself. Uh, Vigo Amaro reflects the adventurous spirit of its namesake, Francis Vigo, a revolutionary Italian financier who supported the colonial cause of independence. I can vibe with that right about now. Honoring Italian culture in America, Philadelphia Distilling brings together the rich heritage and tradition typically employed in creating an Amaro with a touch of new world flair and innovation. The double mac maceration process ensures that each botanical in Vigo's handcrafted blend reveals its essential character, creating a un unique and evocative aroma and a satisfying finish that will linger long in the memory. Just like, just like anything else that we might want to stick around. Long memory, a long, whoa, words, a long presence in my memory. You'll never forget. Uh, it's, I, I opened it up for the first time yesterday, but honestly didn't take too much of a, take a look at it, so I'm gonna give it a smell. And it actually kind of, it smells like, like wood varnish almost. Not like wood, not like wood varnish as in like, I guess some people would consider like, like very peaty liqueurs to smell like wood varnish. But this one kind of smells like bitter, almost, almost like, like spicy pepper -y, I guess. Actually, actually, I'm really curious about what this actually tastes like, like, so I'm going to, I'm going to give it a little try. I'll put the rest of my vodka in there. Yo, what you making today? Today. We're making a cocktail called Peramoya, which is a cocktail that was created by a Seattle-based uh, restaurant called Tutabella, which all the pro if, the, if you bought it at the restaurant, all the proceeds would go to help the folks in Ukraine right about now. However, I am not Tutabella. I do not accept cash payments. And um, well, I guess anything, well, I guess any anything I would receive in recognition of this would go straight to the links that I have in the description and in the chat. So I guess I could do that. All proceeds going to help Ukraine. I can do it. You can do it. Anybody can do it. And it's called Peramoya. And the Peramoya is the Ukrainian word for victory. So, victory for Ukraine. But for keeping for uh, whatever your local locality is. Local locality? Local jurisdiction? Your locality. That makes sense. I'm going to try what my locality has in store for me in the Amaro land. I will be honest. I've never had an Amaro before. I've only heard of it, heard it named, and I have an entire book. I have an entire book that specifically mentions various different types of Amaro cocktails, but I really haven't been able to find any of my own that are called out in those recipes. So the search continues, mostly because uh, I'm lazy. I could just go. I could just drive to a, uh, a particular liquor store in like New Jersey and stuff, but I don't go super often, and it's not like I specifically go to the outer states just to buy alcohol. I feel like it's technically illegal. But Vigo Amaro smells kind of varnishy, smells spicy, and tastes like... Hmm. Interesting. It's bitter. It's very bitter. But like a sweet bitter. It's not like bitter, bitter, like, oh my god, I gotta spit it out. But it's, it's bitter and then sweet, as opposed to like sweet and then bitter, 
What I get of a sweetness is almost like... I want to call it a deep flavor, but to be more specific, I think it's actually kind of pruney. Kind of, kind of pruney or like, um... There's a little bit of like nut in there too, like like walnut. I think I want to say I want to say to sum it up, it kind of tastes like, tastes and smells like the floor of the forest in autumn, mixed with a little bit of paint varnish, the bitterness I would suppose you would expect from peeling back tree bark and licking the sap, and then prunes. That's what I'd go with. That would be a major commitment for sure. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Actually, that's not too bad. I don't know what Amaro's tastes like combined with other things, but I trust the cocktail mixologist behind this particular concoction, and, uh, well, I guess we'll see. So I'm going to need one ounce of, if you have Amaro Montenegro, you should use that. If you don't, then I suppose mine's inspired by the Italian Amaro business, the Italian Amaro culture, so I think it's the closest thing I got. And keeping with the spirit of it all, if you're, if you're willing to, if you have to, like, substitute things out, why not go with something local? Mine's local. I'll go with it. One ounce, or about 30 milliliters of whatever your local Amaro is, whenever you've got it. It's the only one I got. So that's the only one I'm going with. I love how this, I, this one's actually kind of cute. It's got a little ribbo, a ribbon around it, and I think I might actually be able to untie that. Yeah, I could totally untie that and keep it for later after the fact. That's so cool. Definitely a crazy thing to try. I like this. I'm into this. Actually, so I found, to, to catch up, in, in case you didn't hear it before, I found this while scrolling through the news feed on my Google Discover feed, and as it turns out, I, I, saw, I saw a cocktail recipe on there, and they were like, this is, we're doing this for Ukraine. I was like, I like that. I'm interested. What do you got in there? And I immediately was like, I gotta figure out how I can get ingredients for this thing, because like, I wanna try this, and I wanna try this right now, because this is the perfect excuse to go buy and try something new. And then, you know, also found out, oh, Astro found out, that your Z key is a little sticky. Z! Z! Oh, like the Z key on the Z in the keyboard. It was actually really funny. Right before stream started, I have a little keyboard over here so I don't have to be all the way over on the other side. I was sick and tired of my wired keyboard. It just wouldn't work. I, but for some reason, the keys weren't working. But they're working now. I think they are, right? Yeah, I managed to... Yeah, it definitely worked. I managed to switch scenes successfully. Therefore, it totally worked. And there's nothing that I can do to disprove that unless I unplug it. It's actually kind of weird. I think I think I had to unplug, replug to get it to work again. In any case, the next ingredient that I have to put into my cocktail shaker, or just the pint glass for now, then we get into the shaky shaky, is one half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of lemon juice. I apologize, apologize if I'm not getting the um, the proportions in milliliters exactly right. Usually I have notes on me. I forgot to write the conversions, but they'll be they'll be reference they'll be proper reference for that elsewhere. And for that, I'm gonna need, for lemon juice, I'm gonna need lemons. I gotta cut some lemons. So allow me to set myself up for cutting lemon time. Cutting lemon time? Cutting the lemons time. It's time to cut the lemons. I got a newish keyboard the other day, says Astro. Actually, so you've enjoyed using it again. Watch out, I'm gonna cut this lemon bag open. Cut it away from yourself, that's the safe thing to do. And use it again because the other keys, the keys are actually a lot easier to look at than the other ones. A lot easier to look at, ooh. You've got a keyboard that's easy on the eyes. Well, we certainly appreciate things like that. I gotta say, my keyboards are not very easy on the eyes. They're very, they're very dark, sleek, a little dusty. Honestly, not as sleek as they could be, but you know, they get the job done. Actually, I more look for the function in a keyboard. And honestly, what I'm looking for in a keyboard is the fact that it are the proper keys to be able to like turn on and off music easily. Cause I feel like one of the most easy, one of the easiest, easiest, Things. One of the most convenient things to have on a keyboard when you're listening to music is a stop and play button or a fast forward button or a rewind button. So I like to look for functional keyboards and not every keyboard has that. Plus, it's gotta be the right size. I, I wouldn't say I have big hands, but I got a wide, I got a wide range on where my fingers can reach. Ah, it's got one of those too. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. I love things like that. I'm always listening to Spotify and whatnot. And it's, it's funny, my work laptop doesn't have that. Um, so I don't use it very often. I just use my phone, but my home laptop does my home that I'm sorry My home desktop does and I listen to Spotify on my home desktop. So that button is incredibly easy to use and Convenient so if you've got your lemon chopped up like I do if not, that's okay Take your time We're gonna need a half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of lemon juice 
into our cocktail pre-cocktail shaker because we're not quite at the shaker point yet the recipe spe the direction specifically called for putting it into a pint glass i will put it into a pint glass exactly as i've, as I've been told to do because you got to do the cooking by the book uh, and uh esther's keyboard is able to be raised higher than the other one allowing for you to hit the keys better does that have those little like flanges on the back where you can like open them up this way and it kind of like tilts up a little bit because I do like keyboards like that. It honestly depends on like how tall my chair is that, at my computer desk. Like my work chair does not go up and down, but my desk chair does go up and down. So I really don't, I don't feel like I need the flanges on my home computer. Excuse me, but it does, but I do need the flanges at my work computer. The keyboard thumbs, thumbs are the keyboard. I love that. Flange, thumbs, it's all the same. It's all the same thing, I think. And we're gonna actually come back to that lemon later because to be used in our garnish which is very festive very patriotic patriotic from the ukrainian point of view we'll see we'll see we won't spoil it just yet it's not my garnish it was somebody else's idea i take no credit for anything that happens here this is not my recipe although we are making a little bit of changes to it if i had the power to bring the world's knowledge of this cocktail recipe consumption i'm gonna go with water because my cocktail's not done yet love it oh Ooh, haven't had a good consumption like that in a while. I very much appreciate that. Um, I have lemon juice in there. Next, I need... Actually, this is a cocktail ingredient that I feel like I have never actually used on stream because I haven't cracked open this bottle for a long time. I need ginger beer. Specifically, if you have it, Gosling's ginger beer. Don't be fooled by the container. This is Gosling's ginger beer. But once upon a time, I bought myself a six pack of Goslings and was like, I'm sick and tired of having to open up a single can, using an ounce of it, and then throwing it away. So I decided to do the smart thing, and I took a bottle of otherwise inconspicuous pop soda, not root beer, totally not, not great value root beer, and uh, I decided to fill it all up with my own stuff, which is ginger beer, and it's been sitting there, and I don't think I like, by the way that the bottle has been like deformed and whatnot, I think there's been some expansion and compression and stuff while this thing is sat around for as long as it has but it's definitely goslings you can i can assure you of that and if you don't believe me well i guess really no harm no foul oh the keyboard we've made them too powerful the keyboards the world is possible to be grasped by them now because they have opposable thumbs and they're growing bigger hey welcome to the party there the meeps one two three I appreciate your presence here, so I'm gonna put on a party hat in recognition of it. Actually, can I find, can I find a blue one? Ooh, you know what? I have a blue one, so I'm gonna go with the blue one. And because we're trying to show our support, I'm gonna put on, I'm gonna put on an extra party hat. You get a second party hat. Oh my goodness, the meep is subscribed. Oh my goodness, wait a minute. Okay, this actually changes things up considerably. Now what I can do is I can find the blue party hat the silver party hat and then use the tiny yellow party hat where did i put the tiny yellow party hat did i just throw that into a location that i cannot find anymore where did i just put that thing oh i put it on the table i'm very silly ginger beer astro says is a natural palate cleanser actually too for great great for eating meals if you want to keep your tongue to have max flavor potential indeed well i will say this i think depending on the sweetness of your ginger beer it could be a little it could be a little not so palate cleansy so to speak actually wait i just no 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 okay 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 this is gonna be a little upside down but but the spirit's still there i've got if i change my if i do this then the blue is on top and the yellow is on the bottom there we go I'm trying my hardest here, but I find ginger itself, like if you would just eat like ginger, like, you know, when you go to a sushi place and they give you the ginger and the wasabi, I believe the ginger is meant to be a way for you to like cleanse your palates before you eat like the next piece of sushi and stuff like that. But I think in my opinion, ginger beer itself is usually, at least for goslings, is a little too sweet to like cleanse my palate completely. And I think there is a little bit of, I think there is a little bit of an aftertaste, at least for me. Your tongue is totally different than mine. But I think it's a wonderful thing. <laughs> It's such, a, it's such an interesting thing to say. It's like, your tongue is different than my tongue is a very true and slightly uncomfortable statement. Like, somebody out there definitely had to find out one way or another that your tongue is different than my tongue. And before the times of, like, scientific testing and different measuring instruments, how did we know if not to taste each other's tongues? Mm. Put it on your chin like a fancy beer crown? This is totally possible. I mean, I mean, 
you go. Oh my god, look at that! Oh, that is that is uncomfortable, so I will not do it for very long. However, however, we're thinking outside the box out there, and I think that speaks mountains. If mountains could speak, you are the mountain, and you are speaking. I was gonna say, if mountains could speak, you are you are speaking mountains, but that that the, the wording didn't really ma uh, match up there. Oh, I digress. Half an ounce of ginger beer, which is about 15 milliliters. If you're thinking about measuring with a, with a, with I guess a graduated cylinder, I suppose. I feel like if I had a sciency cocktail, and there are sciency cocktails out there, and I'm sure I could find them, I need like a graduated cylinder to be able to like measure in like microliters. Although I've been told that uh, it, apparently anything less than like a fifth of an ounce, at least in the my units, is not really gonna do much for your drink, except luster dust. I can, I can specifically say that Luster Dust in particular, which is a little sparkly powder that makes your drinks look wild and awesome and magical, that definitely has a great effect. I think you should use only a tenth of a teaspoon in that case, which is very tiny, but it's very effective. Infective indeed. We know by basis of I like this, but not that, being contrasted with I don't like this at all, but love that. That's how we can figure out the differences between our tongue. I guess, I guess so, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I don't know why I was getting so weird there. The easy way to determine that your tongue is different than my tongue is the fact that I could really, really like something and you could be like, <laughs> which would mean you really, really don't like something or you just happen to like, I don't know, like like uh, unleash your inner demons as soon as it touches your tongue, which I feel like for some, some things get really acidic. And I wouldn't be surprised if some acidic food out there, like tomatoes, just like totally brings the demons right out of you. But soon, Dr. Stein's coffee setup for cocktails, Dr. Stein's coffee setup, ooh, oh my god. Quick digression from everything else going on here. I was thinking about espresso, right? So if espresso is a technique to be able to grab all the oils and flavors from a coffee bean via pressure, technically, you could also induce that same pressure via a circular centripetal motion. So this is my idea, if it doesn't already exist. It's an espresso machine, but instead of applying pressure through the top, it applies pressure by spinning it around like really, 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 really fast. A centrifugal or centripetal coffee maker, where you put your grounds in there, you put your water in there, just like yee, really fast and then like espresso comes out the other side. I think that would be amazing. And I don't think the world needs it. However, however, if it needs to be made, it can be made, and therefore, the world does need it. Yes, but what about cilantro, where some people taste it as soap and other people taste it like a great flavor? Cilantro? Really? Whoa! Have you tried espresso with orange juice yet? No. Is that a thing? Is that a thing that I should be aware of? I should write that down. I have a pen on me. Orange juice and espresso. I've heard of the orange juice and mint toothpaste. That I've done accidentally. I wouldn't recommend that. It does a thing. With or without pulp. Oh, always with pulp. Always with pulp. If you're gonna dive that deep into something, you gotta go head over heels, toes deep. You gotta. Although, honestly, I like to think of it, let me, let's break that down for a moment. Espresso can sometimes have, like, coffee beans and whatnot can have a very, like, mocha, chocolate, cocoa-like flavor. And to be honest, I love orange flavor plus chocolate. Oh my goodness, the meeps. What are you doing? You are so very kind. All of that, I don't remember exactly know what all the math works out to, but all of that is most certainly going to the proper locations. You are, you are wonderful. And how many was that? Wow, that was five of them. It's time to put party hats on. Because that's what we do around here. We celebrate with party hats. And although it's a lot of party hats, it's gonna be a little, you know, it's gonna take a little bit of time, but one parrot bailed on you. Oh no, one of the parrots went away. So uh, this hasn't happened in a while. So instead, I'm gonna apply my party hats like this, like it's a like it's armor. So that one's gonna go around one area. I've got a party, I've got an armpit party hat. They're probably gonna go on my back like spikes, like I'm Bowser from the Super Mario series. Let's see how fast I can do this. Usually, I take a very very long time to put my party hats on, but you'd think after like a year of doing this that I'd get a little bit faster, and you'd be sort of correct. Probably not. Armor pits, armor pits. Back shoulder pits. These are my are my are my wings. And sometimes I can pop my wings, and sometimes I can't pop my wings. And honestly, if I were wearing less clothes right now, I could probably show you. However, however, I assume there may be children watching, and we don't want to expose them too early. However, if you are under the age of majority in your jurisdiction, please note 
you probably can't drink cocktails. It's probably illegal. So keep that in mind. I'm gonna put this one. Oh, this is actually working out quite well. Wow, this is this is insanity. The Elden Ring armor set no one's a talking about. Someone is talking about it? Yeah, Elden Ring, come on, catch up. I was reading, I think I was reading an article about Elden Ring today. Was Elden Ring the one that they're complaining about outfits for, or was that a different one? I know there's a game, I don't remember which one, it's one of the popular ones right now, where supposedly like certain classes and whatnot are like gender locked, which I think is kind of dumb. But the way that I read it is the company's trying to be like, oh, well, it's so much work to be able to add more skins and stuff like that for different genders. And I'm like, I mean, if you want to get technical, you don't have to change, you don't have to change the physical body type to change the gender, but, but I think people, I, I think they're focusing on like the body parts that you see, in which case, I suppose from a modeling standpoint, it can be difficult, but I'm sure you're a big game corporation and you probably should have thought of that by now, but you rust it, you rust it and you push it all out there. I'm going to put this one on the back of my head. That way I think it'll, oh, no, 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 no. We'll just put this on top. How many I have on there so far? Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Nobody knows, but Astro's been playing, but it didn't look too too into it. I don't really know which one it is. Anyways, the Meeps, you are a respected and thanked individual for your gracious donation uh, for, for a subscription. And once I work out the, I gotta work out the math because I don't know the math off the top of my head, but I'm taking all of that and I am making an equal donation to Ukraine, specifically Razom, which there's, there's, a, there's commands out there for that. I think donate, Ukraine or bundle. There's also a bundle for that too. You can get a bunch of stuff, but it's 50 50 in that case So it depends on like where you want that money to go but Once I figure that out all out that's going there. I'm keeping my promise on that I absolutely will cuz you know, I have a full-time job now. I can I can do a couple bucks every once in a while make sure to Do n the number eight. There we go. Now I've reminded myself. I will hold myself accountable. Elden Ring can be any class and any gender since they've been pretty good about believing you'll be covered all up eventually. Unsure what game I mean. I don't remember which it is. Is it? It's not Elden Ring. Maybe it's Lost Ark. Maybe Lost Ark was the one that they're talking about. I don't know. I keep seeing it in um, the, my feed about games and stuff, but I don't remember. Astro tried to make their character look like look like them in real life, and then the balance build for the first run. I saw somebody do, I think it was a character from like Ichigo or something like that. Uh, it looked pretty cool. They had like the flaming swords and stuff like that. I'm watching a, a stream buddy of mine play Elden Ring because I didn't feel like spending the money on it myself. Um, they are Lively Dawn Shadow. I saw them, I popped in and, uh, and uh, said hello and they were playing Elden Ring the other day. It seems pretty cool. It seems pretty cool. It was kind of cool. I don't usually pop on like during my work hours and whatnot. It's been a very, it's been a very, very busy week at work. And I am incredibly, str I, I will say I am incredibly, incredibly, incredibly pressured upon right now and work has been tough but we're still smiling and honestly as long as we can keep smiling for those who have it a lot worse than we can then i think we'll be all right but before i diverge on the next content that we've got beautiful chat rolling along here i want to make sure i add that next ingredient in there so the next ingredient we've added vodka so far we've added amaro so far lemon juice so far and ginger beer so far and the last ingredients we'll need is some simple syrup one of the things that i kind of want to point out is the place that created this particular cocktail recipe, uh, Tutabella in Seattle, Washington, decided as a part of this to kind of push off the Russian brands that they have on their shelves. And one Russian brand, the, pretty much the only Russian brand that I can name up of, off the top of my head in the cocktail world is is Stolichnaya. And I happen to have a bottle of theirs here. Naturally, I got, I got this bottle long ago, but I think they're rebranding themselves to just Stolies now. And to be perfectly honest, I have never heard anybody pronounce this word completely. I have only ever heard it referred to as Stoli or, yo, you're getting the Stoli? So honestly, it, it'll just make it easier for their brand, I think. But we'll need a quarter of an ounce of simple syrup or complex syrup, really whatever you want. It's whatever, if you know what your taste is, Go for it. But I need a quarter of an ounce, which I think works out to about seven milliliters, right? 30 divided by two is 15 divided by two, about seven, just about. So that's what I'm gonna add. It's a very, it's a very sweet. I, I think I did this in one, one to one, one to one parts. Oh wait, there's a little note over here. Uh, just kidding, that's a date. It says two one, as in the year 2021. Uh, I should probably make a fresher batch, but this is what I got. So that's what I'm gonna go with. Half an ounce, of, a quarter of an ounce, seven milliliters of simple syrup. What else we got going on over here? Alas, Elden Ring has two ladies you can romance as a dude or a lady, but only ladies. Makes me sad. 
Oh, Lorelai, and then adding the Lorelai from Esther. I think they made it kind of like that because a lot of that, a lot of the males are evil. Oh, or other Tarnished trying to go for the ring, the Elden Ring. Oh, is it actually about a ring? I don't know anything about this game. Of course it's about a ring. It's always about a ring, or perhaps multiple rings. I got a couple rings, only two, but one of them's the real deal, and that's the promise ring. I love you, dearest. She's not up there. She's she's over at the library. She's studying right now. You say that like there's a reason for the second love interest to be openly a chick or make either of them a little more explicitly ambiguous. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know if I want to do much romancing in those games. I kind of just want to like swing my sword all around and make a big old mess. In any case, I have added every single constituent to our pint shaker glass. The ice has begun to melt a little bit. I think I'm going to add a bigger cube. I'm going to add a big cube in there because I think it's had a little bit of time to, to melt. So uh, just for the sake of just for the sake of a thorough mix, a thorough shake, let's add that in there carefully. Carefully, I'm not gonna make a mess. And then you can take your pint glass, stick your other shaker half on it, pop it down like that, and uh, it's actually super easy. You don't need to use the other half. You can use any half you want to. Flip it on over carefully, and then <laughs> do that thing that you do so well. And shake. Be careful though, if you're using glass, it's self-explanatory. Just be careful. Astro doesn't have a reason, or I only got like nine hours and like 15% done of the game, so just a guess. Oh, for whatever was going on before. Haven't even gotten your hug in the game yet. Oh, you can go for hugs? Well, that's sweet. I feel like that sort of a that sort of affection gets it gets overlooked in games often. Sorry, I'm trying to adjust my party hat. Eventually I need to put these headphones back on, but not yet. Not yet. I need to. Wardrobe check. Am we all good? Did I forget any party hats? No, I don't think I forgot any party hats. I think we're all president accounted for. Oh my goodness. There's a lady who legit her thing is she gives you a hug? That's wholesome. I don't care how you split that. I think that's wholesome. Unless she's giving you- unless she's charging you. If she's charging you for hugs, then that's not wholesome at all. Hugs deserve to be free! You want a hug? You want a hug? Come here for the hug. Come here. Come here. Come here for the hug. Hug. Hug time. Time for a hug. There's your hug. That's your hug for the day. Hugs are free. Hugs are free around here. Usually, usually I can't walk up to the camera, but in this case, I can. And I might have, did I cock it off balance a little bit? I might have, whatever, it's okay. It'll be fine. So now that you've shaken your cocktail concoction, the next thing you need is to double strain it into a rocks glass. Uh, I don't have a rocks glass per se, but what I do have is what you would consider an old fashioned or maybe a double rocks glass. I just don't have anything small enough. If I had a small enough glass, I would totally use that. And I just noticed I gotta, I'm gonna put things up in my yoga blocks. Excuse me, as I set up the real, the real show, the cocktail show. Zoom, 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 zoom. Try to get a better view of this particular cocktail glass. Hello, everybody. Hello! It's time for Zoom time as I set up the camera properly. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Honestly, this could use a little bit of a polish. A little bit of polish. Gotta polish things off. You know, if you haven't seen a bartender tending to their bar or wiping their glassware clean, I don't think you've actually seen a real bartender at all. I think they're all fake. You gotta clean your glasses, make sure they look pretty. And this one, although it looks marginally better than before, looks pretty good. Oh my goodness, Elden Ring apparently takes a lot of influence from games like Ragnarok or the ring cycle type illusion in addition to the importance of literal rings. Gotta love that. We didn't know about that when you say like, God damn, you're right. Oh my goodness. If I had more context. If I had more context. But I don't want to spend, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I think Elden Ring costs money and I don't feel like spending the money right now. Cause I, I don't feel like spending the money because I, I feel like I'm not gonna put enough time into it to like warrant the cost. I'll buy it when it's on sale, eventually. Which means I'm gonna miss the hype, but that's okay. I don't mind. Okay, so now, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add specifically a large ice cube. I have large ice cubes, or cubes that I would consider large. Uh, actually, that's a pretty, that's a pretty, I grabbed the wrong one. This is a small one. I want a big, I have a, grabbed a small big ice cube because with a big, big ice cube, I can do this. Oh, it didn't actually spin. It's supposed to spin. Oh, well. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. That's okay. You only see that when people go to fancy bars. Is this not a fancy bar? Wait! I cleaned my glass. It is a fancy bar. Nice. So now that you've added your big old cube in there, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna double strain 
your concoction into the glass below. Now, I don't exactly know why the double strain comes into play here, but I think if you're doing fresh lemon juice and you have a little bit of pulp in there, you want to make sure that you don't get that pulp in there. So, oh, actually, this is like the perfect size glass. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. That's looking all right. Oh my god, I the, 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 the ice cube's got a little bit of a bounce to it. That, I think, is comical. I thoroughly enjoyed that. Excuse me. All right, so next we got, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add our garnish to it. Now, it is a cocktail inspired by, inspired by Ukraine. So the garnish, I believe, was also inspired by the country. The country's flag is like blue on top, yellow on the bottom. I think, I don't, it, it, that's, that's what it looks like. Um, Google it. I don't have a picture of the flag on me right now, but if I could draw, here. Here's a representation of the Ukrainian flag. Think of my shirt, and here's um, yellow below it. This is my Ukrainian flag in the background. At least my best attempt at it. I'm sorry. I could use an actual lemon. Here we go. Well, that's... Mm, I tried my best. In any case, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a little bit of a garnish for that. What I saw was to use... And I guess I'll kind of... I'll like switch spots. I'll switch the cocktail so that this is in the back and the garnish maybe is in the front. I've never done an up-close garnish thing before. I've been trying to work on my garnish game a little bit more, but we're going to take a wheel of the lemon, then we're going to cut it in half, and then we're going to skewer that lemon and put two blueberries on either side to try to give that blue, yellow, and then blue look away no matter no matter what direction that you slice it. So I'm going to try my best. Let's see how it goes. I am going to cut a slice, a little wheel of my lemon as best as I can. My table is very wobbly. It's not on a very good surface. So I'm going to do this slowly because I don't want to spill my cocktail. That would be sad. So we're going to cut off a wheel. I didn't need the full wheel, so that's all okay. Now I'm going to cut it into a uh, cut it into a wedge. So I'm just going to cut right down the center there. There we go. Don't need this part. Do need this part. Take a look at that. And next I'm going to need some blueberries and skewers. They call for a bamboo skewer. I don't have bamboo skewers. I have toothpicks. I bought these years ago. They are... I... I believe they are... Hebrew. They are written in Hebrew. I don't know where they came from. I think I bought them from Amazon. It's beautiful. Blue skies with the golden field vibe. Over the, over the blue sky. Over the golden fields. I like that. And I bought... And Anna bought blueberries for me. They were from the store. I think they were from Target. Blueberries taste like... Very sweet. Usually the blueberries I have are a lot more tart, but these have been very sweet. All the fruits that I've been grabbing have been very sweet lately. I like that. That is so much better. And so now what I'm going to do is my toothpick actually is not long enough to go all the way across the glass. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to have two toothpicks to be able to bridge that gap. And, you know, we'll, we'll, I'll try to illustrate this. I'm going to use less of my words and more of my actions. So let's take uh, one blueberry... Stab that from one side. I'm gonna do another blueberry. Stab that from the other side. And then, what I'm gonna try to do, is I try to meet it in the middle. Actually, I got a better idea. Hold on, let me eat those blueberries. I got a better idea. Mm. Is that what I'm gonna do? One blueberry. One blueberry stabbed sorta of towards the top. I'm gonna do another blueberry. Sorta of kinda of stabbed from the top. Then what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to have the meat on both sides of the lemon. So, I'll have one facing the top, going through the top of the lemon, kind of like that, um, and adjust that so that the toothpick is a little farther out. Then I'll have the other one facing this way instead. Actually, that, that's not really a good way of doing it. Okay, um, so like this, on the other side, I'm gonna put it through like this, attempting to stab the blueberry on the other side, trying not to stab myself, and then stab both blueberries. There we go, double stabby stab. And I can kind of hide the toothpick from the one blueberry in the other. This is our little flag. This is our little Ukraine flag, kind of looks like that. It's blue on both sides, yellow in the middle. I'm gonna lay that atop across the glass itself. And that's how we do it. This has been the cocktail Peremoya, spelled P-E-R-E-M-O-H-A. At least that's that's how the way that I was reading it. What's it up here? Oh, look at this. Blueberries irritate you because they're purple with green insides. 
They don't really taste blue either, to be perfectly honest. I think blue tastes more like the sea, which means they would probably be a little more salty in my book. However, that's interesting. We've only ever seen them green. Yeah, these ones are like, like a dark, like a dark, like purplish, I guess. The, the label on the outside is more purple and or blueberry-ish than the actual one on the inside. Shocking. In any case, that's what we got. That's what we got. So, the Peramoya. I think it looks pretty damn good. It's not too. It's not too bad, honestly. I like that. Allow me to, t shamelessly, allow me to take my Instagram picture, because that's what I've been trying to do. What I've been attempting to do recently is making sure that I kind of, kind of give these cocktails their due. It looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. It looks all right. Sorry about that. I don't know how I feel about taking my Instagram photos on camera, but you know what? That's that's what I'm going with now. So, if you got a problem with that. Drop a like and comment below. Because <laughs> I want to know about it. I want to know your thoughts. I want to talk to you. I want to know who you are. Never seen green insides in a blueberry. To be fair, I haven't seen many blueberries in my life. Actually, actually, I, I take that back. My parents' house, there's a little blueberry bush in the backyard, and I picked some blueberries, and they were like... They were like a like a seafoam green almost, but that's because they weren't ripe yet, so that actually kind of makes sense. Maybe the heat kind of makes them change, potentially. I'm supposing as they ripen, they become more blue. In any case, so, oh, where'd my recipe go? Oh my God, I like to recite the recipe so that everybody knows at the very end. The Petermoya, inspired by, or uh, created by the restaurant Tutabella in Washington, Seattle, made so to be able to put all proceeds of any sales of the drink to support Ukraine in these tough times, um, is made with one ounce of vodka. If you have a non-Russian brand around, that kind of is in the spirit of the whole thing. They used chop, ch chop, chopin, chopin, which I believe is a Polish brand. Uh, I found they used potato vodka, so I used my local potato vodka, Skunk Town. Uh, that's one ounce of that, or about 30 milliliters. There's one ounce, or about 30 milliliters of. They said Amaro Montenegro. I think that's the most popular Amaro that I know of. It's an Italian-based liqueur. I used Vigo Amaro, which is one from Philadelphia, which is inspired by the Italian herbal uh, liqueur Amaro stuff. Chopin. Is it said like the pianist? Chopin? Chopin? It might be Chopin. You might be, that might be pretty good there. I, I'll admit, I looked up how to say, out of, of the three new words that I learned today, I looked up how to pronounce two of them and I, I forgot, I forgot this one. So I'm gonna go with Chopin. I like that. It sounds good. Uh, in addition to the, the one ounce of Amaro Montenegro, if you have it, if not, whatever your local Amaro happens to be, if you have one, which was pretty cool to discover that we did have one here in Philadelphia. Did not know that before I went to my liquor store. Uh, which is one ounce or about 30 milliliters as well. Half an ounce of lemon juice, if you can make it fresh, awesome. If not, if it tastes good to you, then that's fine. Half an ounce is about 15 milliliters. Uh, an additional 15 milliliters or one half an ounce of ginger beer. They suggest goslings. There's literally no reason not to use any other ones. I think they're all kind of all kind of equivalent. And then a quarter of an ounce of simple syrup. Mine was simple, simple. One to one ratio, water to sugar. A uh, quarter of an ounce or about seven milliliters of that. Shake that up. Double strain it, put it in your glass, garnish it with a little, little flag if you've got it. Cheers to my friends. Cheers to my friends, acquaintances, and those who have not yet gotten to that point yet because I guess we just haven't introduced each other yet. We haven't we haven't had that inaugural handshake or, or the bro hug or anything like that. I just don't know you yet. In which case, we could be friends or acquaintances. But I leave it up to you to reach the first hand, other, to reach out the first hand. Otherwise, if I went around to literally everybody would be like, can I be your friend? be a little I feel like it would be a little disconcerting for the, the your average stranger on the street the peramoya smells nice it actually smells really you can tell or actually okay if i didn't know that there was an amaro in here i'd be like wow that doesn't smell familiar to me but i know because it doesn't smell familiar to me is that i know that it's coming from the amaro and so that's got like a, that had like a, like an, like an earthy, bittery, er, it really, it says herbal, but herbal is so nondescript that I'm not inclined to use the same word. However, I agree. It is very, very herbal. And by herbal, I mean, it kind of tastes like you went into the forest, stuck your face against the ground and rustled in the leaves, then put your face against a tree and licked the sap, and then decided to take whatever shrub was nearby and shove it in your mouth. I think that's herbal. That's botanical. That's Amaro, and it kind of smells like that a little bit. Not as not as not as direct as when I actually put the liquor up to my nose. But what does it taste like? Mm. 
Whoa. That's not bad. Whoa, that's not bad. Okay, the first thing I get, the first thing that I got uh, before I breathed in was I tasted, I tasted a sweet sourness, but it wasn't too sour. It didn't taste like it was just lemon juice. There was definitely the sugar from the simple syrup and the sugar from the ginger beer that kind of diluted that down. It tasted immediately like a little bit of lemon, but a bit more sweet. And I got more of the, to be honest, I got more of the ginger beer than I did of the lemon juice. But then as soon as I breathed in, the moment that I breathed in, it's kind of like, it's a thing they taught me in wine class. You're like, you take a sip of it, you kind of like it a little bit and then you breathe in and then you take the swallow and it brings out like different evolutionary flavors and stuff like that. Honestly, I didn't think it was a really, I thought it was just a snobby thing to do. But it kind of works and maybe i'm just maybe i've just done it for so long now that i kind of fooled myself into thinking that it does work the placebo effect totally worked however i do believe it works it's like it's crazy yeah it's so it's it's sweet it's a sweet lemony sweet ginger off the bat and then as soon as you breathe in and swallow it's got this like it's not even an unpleasant bitterness it's not unpleasant at all it's like I wouldn't say it's definitely not as bitter as coffee. If you've ever had a drink with Campari in it, like a Negroni, it's not as bitter as Campari is if you have that for comparison. I've yet to taste Aperol, Aperol, which I've been told is kind of like a Campari, it's kind of like a Campari substitute, but it's a little sweeter. I haven't had it yet, but I would think that this kind of has that sweetness to bitterness ratio of what I imagine Aperol, Aperol to taste like. But the flavor is evolving. My taste is evolving. Maybe I'm the one who's evolving. No, I think the drink, the drink is evolving. The drink, the drink has evolved into something so much more than its constituents, and maybe the whole symbol, symbolism of it all kind of, kind of helps with that as well. But I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I guess it kind of works, right? Like if you feel, if you feel good about the food that you're eating, I feel like it kind of makes it taste a little better. I don't know. I feel like things taste better with a smile on your face. Maybe. Keep our, we gotta keep our, keep our smiles up for the people who, for the people who can't smile. At least the one thing that we can do is keep our face smiling for positive, positive mental attitude. But alas, a very literal bittersweet in reverse, sweet bitter. Oh yeah, oh yeah, bittersweet. Sweet, oh yeah, it was sweet first and then bitter. It's interesting. I was actually, I saw, I saw my younger brother over the weekend who does a bit of baristaing up, up uh, where he lives, and so he was explaining to me that like certain types of coffees just kind of like hit your, fla your flavor buds a different ways. And apparently he, he put he put French roast coffee right in front of him and just like, taste a little bit of this and try to look for the flavor in the back of your tongue and like the top of your cheeks. And I was like, I took a sip and admittedly, maybe it's because he focused my mind on it, but I was like, yeah, I do taste something that is a little bit bitter back here, but I feel it up here as well. And he's like, that's a particular common I guess common experience for like French roast coffee. It has to do with the way that they, they roast it or the type of beans and whatnot that they're using. I thought that was pretty cool. And it kind of got me thinking, it was like, you know, this kind of reminds me of like my cocktail stuff. And he and I kind of, it was so fun. I had such an awesome conversation with my brother over the weekend. Speaking of which, I'm talking about my younger brother. My youngest brother, I went home for the weekend because I watched my youngest brother absolutely kill it as an ensemble member in Disney's The Little Mermaid, a show that my high school was putting on. And it was probably one of the best shows that I've ever seen come out of that school. I think much better than half the shows that I was in when I was in high school at that same school. Brendan, my man, you killed it. It was awesome. I loved it. I, I particularly, it, if you're familiar with the, with the musical production of The Little Mermaid, the one song that got me that has been stuck in my head is when Flounder and Ariel's six mermaid sisters were all trying to figure out what the heck is going on with her, and then they, it dawns on them. They're like, oh my god, she's in love. And the chorus goes something a bit like, she's in love, she's in love. And I don't know, something about like the harmonies and the melodies that were all like interlacing together in that particular piece was so, it was so well done. And I actually listened to the Spotify version that I could find after the fact, and I honestly preferred the high schoolers singing it. It was sauce that I was so blown away by it. But then my other brother, my younger brother, oh, and oh my God, I can't forget to mention because he literally, literally just popped up. First musical from that teacher director as well, Thank I Guess, was also in that show and was killing it on the French horn. There was one song and it was one of the ones where it was, it was our main character, Ariel, the, 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 the sea mermaid queen princess was singing solo on the stage. And there was a point in time where it was only our main protagonist 
and thank I guess on that French horn. Those were the only two sounds you could see in the entire theater, and it sounded awesome. It perfectly set the vibe. Claps, claps. You really broke your legs out there. You broke your horns. You broke everything out there, and that was awesome. Indeed. Hey, uh, Lorelai was saying before that we could make our garnish into a happy face, too. Lemon is the smile, and the berries are the eyes. We could do that if we kind of, like, stabbed it all, like, all the way across. It actually kind of looks like, come to think of it, it kind of looks like a fish. Kind of fishy. This is like a kind of fish, kind of, like, swimming around. Interesting. See? The interpretation is all yours. But, uh, like, uh, not in its current order. But, yeah, alas, alas, in there. But it was, it was awesome. That's what I saw over the weekend. And then my younger brother and I were talking about, because he does barista-ing, and I do mixologicaling, bartending. I do bartending at home, and he does barista-ing at a place. And so we kind of talked about how, like, we're kind of, like, as we get older, our taste buds are evolving. We're just, we're getting to a point where we, like, like, piece out different flavors and stuff. And it was, just, I don't know, it was such a... Yeah, I feel like I had some really awesome brother bonding moments over the weekend. It was a really, really feel-good moment to me. And then, and then we, we got back into work, and work's been stressful. I don't feel like getting into that. That's a, that's a bit much this time around. But so, I really like this. This is very tasty. This is very, very tasty indeed. I really do like the Peramoya. Not my recipe. Got it from the internet. They wind up coming up on there and whatnot. And uh, if, obviously, there is absolutely no pressure to do any sort of donation or anything like that, but I just want to make sure that it's stated that there are links that if you want to support on your own, it doesn't, there's no notification here or anything like that. There's absolutely no pressure. It's completely anonymous from my point of view, but there are links in case you want to, to do that. And so, I think that actually worked. That did work. Those are the links that you can go to. That first, I just want to make sure it, just, it bears repeating because I really want to stress that this is not about anything going on right here. It's all about what's going on over across the pond right now. And that first link there is a it's, it's um it's a bundle that was put together by itch.io by over like 700 different creators. If the minimum donation I think is ten dollars, and there's a 50/50 split between what goes to Ukraine and then what goes to I guess itch.io and the other creators and whatnot. So, but you can get like. 900 over 900 different items some of them are game, direct download games some of them are books some of them are otherwise i think it's actually a pretty good deal i don't think i need that many things in my collection so if you're somebody like me who doesn't necessarily need all that stuff there's also another uh, link that is direct to uh Ra um oh my god i gotta make sure razom razom for ukraine which is a, another organization that is also gathering funds and donations to be able to support the effort over there and it's, it can be, it's actually heartwarming in kind of a way to be able to see like a country really pull together to kind of like, you know, keep itself intact. It was actually pretty cool. I saw, uh, I saw, I think it was a post on Reddit of um, a, a video, must have been from like a news source or something like entire communities coming together to be able to like crack these Molotov cocktails to be able to defend themselves for from any invaders that would be coming into the country and, you know, tearing down your livelihood. It's, it's crazy what's going on over there. But this is, this. I mean, I don't know exactly what I can do, but hopefully bringing more word to it, keeping a smile on our face, and at least, you know, share, sharing. The, honestly, take those and share them. Sp do, do the thing that the internet does and spread this to the world. That bundle is only, I think it's only, the deal is only active for like the next week. I think it's about nine days. So catch that while you can. It's just a minimum of $10. You could donate like 200 if you wanted to and also get all that stuff. It's pretty cool. I think it's a pretty cool thing, but please, Please consider that. It's that. It's not. A, it's not about anything. It's not even about us. It's about them. Unless you are a part of it, in which case, it's all about you, and it's all about attempting to make sure that you come out safely on the other side in whatever way that we can. And I know money has a bit of a swaying property to it. And my garnish fell into my drink. Oh no, that's okay. I don't want to put my mouth on a toothpick to be perfectly honest. But in support of everything going on. No to war. I, I will state this perfectly clear. I try not to get very political, but I don't like war. It's not a very happy feeling. It doesn't bring about... It doesn't spark joy in me. So I say no to war. If those words of mine have any particular meaning or sway. I think I have much support for the people who are currently... Their home is being bombarded. I don't like that. I don't think that's very nice. But if it were my home, if it were me and my fiance being put in risk, if it were me and my family, I would be doing the exact same thing that y'all are doing right now. And so my heart goes out to all of it as, you know, as, 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 as sincerely as I can try to say it. I, I tend to think that, you know, potentially it's not, it, it doesn't come across as sincere, but I mean, I'm, yeah, I guess I'm, I'm trying, trying to keep positive over here. But alas, thank you all so much for coming along. It got a little dreary, got a little morbid, but you know, it's all for a good cause, I think.
Cheers to everybody out there. Thanks for coming along. If you got a little bit more from the recipe itself, maybe you share this with other people. It'd be pretty cool. It'd be pretty awesome. The world of cocktail is ever growing. And to be perfectly honest, I think we need more participants. There's always there's always room for another for a fellow uh, tender, fellow tender, fellow tender, a fellow mixologist, a fellow mixologist. I like that. There's always room for more mixologists out there. It doesn't even have to be alcohol. There are plenty of non-alcoholic spirits out there to be able to get you going. I just can't seem to buy them at my local liquor store. I haven't been able to find them. I need links. I need links that ship to Philadelphia. But alas, thank you, everybody. So with that said, peace to everybody. We're playing games. Oh, yes, there is games. I'm playing Hollow Knight tonight. I completely forgot to put that in my description. But I'm playing Hollow Knight. That's what's coming out after this. It's going to be a good time. It's going to be good. Keep on smiling, everybody. Paramoya, victory in Ukraine. Have a wonderful rest of your nights, your day, your evening, wherever you are, as the sun sets, whether it's because of the clouds or otherwise. Much love and much support. It's going to be okay. Peace to everybody until next time. See you in a little bit. shells blue lake the lake of blue it is both blue and lake is it deadly it is not i should heal first just in case it would be wise to prepare myself for whatever danger awaits ahead ooh 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 i can't wait to find out what ooh means <laughs>